So looking at it now, it looks brand new. It's got a fresh coat of paint. You'd never know that it's already been to space. So it's six in the morning and we are on our way to see a man about a rocket. We're here at Kennedy Space Center to see another SpaceX Falcon 9 launch. It's a pretty standard launch for them, but that's kind of the point. They're sending up a satellite for the company SES, but what's extra special about this launch is that this Falcon 9 has already been to space. This is basically the entire point of SpaceX landing all of its rockets for the last two years. They're trying to perfect reusable rockets. So what is reusability? Well, it's just like it sounds. It's reusing your rocket after launching it. Seems pretty straightforward, but expendable rockets have been more or less the norm since the beginning of rocketry. Once a rocket takes off, it's essentially treated like trash. Parts of it either stay up in space or fall away to Earth and break apart in the ocean. The problem with that is that you're throwing away a very expensive investment with each launch. Rockets cost tens to hundreds of millions of dollars to make. And with each new mission, you have to make an entirely new rocket. But reusing rockets, especially the most expensive parts, like the engines and the propellant tanks, can help reduce those hefty costs. But it's not so simple as just bringing your rocket back from space. In order for a rocket to get to orbit, it has to go incredibly fast, thousands of miles per hour fast. Uh, to, to achieve orbital velocity, you're talking about you know seven and a half kilometers per second, which is uh, wicked fast. Um, and to bring something back from those speeds, uh, you have to kind of reverse the process. So you have to get rid of all of that energy, uh, which means uh, a lot of heat, a lot of deceleration, a lot of pressure. Uh, that all has to be managed. There are a lot of techniques for bringing back vehicles from space, such as using wings like the space shuttle or parachutes. But what SpaceX is using is a technique called supersonic retropropulsion. It's basically using the rocket's propulsion system, which takes the vehicle up, to bring it back down again. SpaceX doesn't save the entire rocket, though. It saves the first stage, the 14-story core of the Falcon 9 that holds the main engines and most of the fuel. Once the first stage separates from the top of the rocket, it makes a controlled fall back to Earth. Fuel left over from the launch is used to reignite the engines on the rocket in a series of burns to help the vehicle re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and then slow down for landing. Grid fins attached to the rocket help to steer it during the descent. A big benefit of this method is that it can be scaled up if you want to build a bigger rocket, which SpaceX definitely wants to do. The future Falcon Heavy is basically three Falcon 9 cores strapped together, and all three are designed to come back to Earth. SpaceX has tried landing 13 of its rockets, and so far eight of them have touched down successfully. This one is the second one they've ever landed. It sent cargo and supplies to the International Space Station in April of last year, and then it returned and made the first ever drone ship landing. And now they're going to try and do that whole process again. This one is going to attempt a drone ship landing for the second time. This is a pretty straightforward launch for SpaceX. It's sending up a satellite for the company SES, which is based out of Luxembourg. And SES has been very vocal about wanting to be the first ones to fly on a flown booster. And they're pretty confident that it's gonna go just fine. We've tested this thing, we've run these engines up, we've looked at the airframe, we've looked at all of the various different components on this thing, and this thing is good to go. This, we don't believe we're taking an inordinate risk here. A lot of people compare it to flying a plane, right? You wouldn't want to throw away your plane after it flies from New York to Los Angeles. Of course, a plane doesn't have to go to space and back. It doesn't have to deal with the same environmental conditions as a rocket. Each one of these stages, uh, the tanks, the structure, the engines themselves, they're going to have to be inspected uh, by, the by the same people that built them in the first place, uh, re-qualified for flight, probably through some ground-based testing, uh, before they go again. So we're not talking about, you know, landing a first stage and then, you know, within hours or minutes uh, launching that first stage again. Plus, these stages won't last forever. CEO Elon Musk has said that parts of the Falcon 9 can be used up to 100 times, but he expects between 10 to 20 relaunches for a single stage. 
However, if refurbishment costs are only about a few million dollars, then SpaceX could see some cost savings. The most expensive part of the whole, uh, the whole mission from a launch standpoint is the, the, the boost stage. Uh, it represents, depending on how you count it, um, up to 70% of the cost of the flight. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell says that she expects a 30% savings for customers that launch on reused rockets, though SpaceX is only offering discounts on the order of 10% for the time being. Um, we did receive a discount, obviously, to, to fly this. There was some interest in it. There was some incentive to do so. But it, it's not just the money in this particular case. It's really, let's get this proof of concept moving. Someone has to go first here. Still, when we're talking about millions of dollars, that's not an insignificant price dip. And any way we can lower costs, especially for an industry as expensive as aerospace, means more companies can invest in space in the long term. It, it's long been believed in the, in the, by the space community that if we can make our rockets uh, reusable, uh, we could greatly reduce the cost of access to space, we could open the space frontier. Oh my goodness. Falcon Lines configured for flight. -9, Lift off of Falcon 9, the world's first reflight of orbital class rocket. Falcon 9 is clear the tower. Woo! It's been 15 years to get to this point. It's taken us a long time. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of difficult steps along the way, but um, I'm just incredibly proud of the SpaceX team for being able to, to uh, achieve this um, incredible milestone in the history of space. We still don't really know the economic implications of reusable rockets yet, but no matter what, this is a watershed moment for the aerospace industry. A vertical takeoff rocket that can achieve orbit has never really launched for a second time before. So no matter what, this is a really historic moment for the space industry. Rockets! Ha, ha, ha.